Hello and welcome to today's webinar on adding life to years, lead a pain-free life through exercise. This webinar is brought to you by the Active Aging and Lifelong Learning Subcommittee. Good afternoon. My name is Jeremy Sia and I'm the chairperson for Active Aging and Lifelong Learning Subcommittee. Today's webinar has some light exercises. It will be an hour long with 30 minutes for questions and answers. If you have any questions, you can type them in on, and you can also vote your questions. The next event is next Thursday on the 23rd of July. The topic is estimating maximum affordability for your next property purchase. So please uh, <clears throat> register your interest. Let me introduce our speaker today. She is Teresa Sui. Teresa has over 17 years experience in health and fitness industry as a personal fitness trainer and Pilates coach. She has designed and delivered corporate health programs and talks on weight management and lifestyle disease management. She is currently a senior lecturer with Republic Polytechnic. She is also a certified clinical fitness trainer and advisory board member of Exercise with Medicine Singapore. Without much ado, let me hand over to Teresa. Hi. I'm very excited today. I'm Teresa. I'm very excited today that um, I can once again share with fellow NUS uh, NUSU members. I'm from MUS, MUS myself for my undergraduate um, uh, degree. And um, yeah, thanks Jeremy for introducing me. I have been in the fitness industry and my uh, little passion is how to bring health and overall wellness through exercise to people. Okay, without much further ado, I just let me share screen so that you can take a look at my slides. All right, so I believe you can see my slides now. So today I'm going to talk about how to make your life, especially um, if you are already retired or, or slowing down, how can you have more time to enjoy than to suffering from pain, okay? Because we, you, we really don't want to spend your free time um, not able to do your favorite golf, or your favorite dance class just because you are having knee pain or you're having low back pain, okay? We really can manage any pains or improve the condition through exercise, through active lifestyle. Today, like what Jeremy had mentioned just now, it will be a mixture of theory and towards the end of the session, there will be some hands-on, so feel free to move with me. So where I come from is, I'm from uh, Republic Polytechnic, School of Sports, Health and Leisure. We are the only dedicated polytechnic that have uh, sports courses. We offer courses on full spectrum, on sports and health related skills. And myself is um, with the Health Management and Promotion Diploma. So we do have a lot of uh, courses within our school for people like you. So a little about me, um, I have a master's in sports science and um, I have a lot of fitness training previously, but my current love has been uh, Pilates and also something called gyrotonic. Maybe not many of you have heard of, but I just like these two movement system that is uh, rather intelligent and it also works the body very efficiently. So my current favorite movement methods are actually Pilates and gyrotonic. So feel free to Ask me more another time, you know, you can email me if you want to know more about this. And uh, my interest is very much to work with post rehab clients. So I am not a physiotherapist, but I work along with them, with the therapists or clinicians for clients who are discharged, meaning that they are no longer feeling uh, acute pain or their surgery has been successful and they have been managed and stabilized. 
I just want to bring them up to another level of fitness. So uh, I, we call that post rehab. So I work a lot with a post rehab um, uh, clients. So these I just share with you two very successful case studies. One of them uh, was Madame Deloca. Okay, these are, the name has changed, but the cases are real, okay? When I first met her, she was 78 years old. Still drive around to do her shopping, pretty independent, but she can't sit or stand for more than 20 minutes without pain. And every trip that she go to the mall, she'll be get, she'll get home within 40 minutes because she just can't take the pain, excruciating pain uh, on her spine, especially low back, which also shook down her back of her legs. She has seen doctors and um, they have seen pain management specialists. She was told that she would need a surgery, but she feel that she wouldn't want to have another surgery at her age. So she came to see me and hopefully that through exercise, her condition can improve. So when she first see me, her main wish is to be able to be playing with her grandchildren because whenever her grandchildren visit her, she just sit at a couch and uh, not feel like moving at all. And when her grandchild play on the floor, she can't quite get down to, to play with them, which is rather sad, you know, it's like a little invisible boundary between her and her grandchildren. So we have, I put her on Pilates machines and with the method that can train her very progressively. And after about seven months, she can squat all the way down to the floor to play with her grandchildren. So to her, she felt that that was life changing. Although some of you who are maybe younger, you probably feel that, mm, so what if I can get down to the floor? But as we age, we start to lose some basic function to getting out of the car become more and more difficult. You wouldn't want to climb the stairs or you find that squat toilet is something that you are really afraid of. You try not to go toilet when you are out and about just because you are losing some very basic function. But with exercise, there's a very, very good chance that you can gain back all these functions and regain that kind of uh, functional movement in the daily life. And then my next case study, very quickly, is uh, Mr. Tan. He's relatively young, you know, 52 years old, still working in a corporate um, setting. He looks strong and active, he plays ball on the weekend, but a lot of friends didn't know was every time after golf, he would go home with very, very bad, severe back ache, very deliberating back ache that he probably can't move on the next day. He also had very severe frozen shoulder that he has been treated with pain management medicine for over three years. So my approach when I met him, was I told him, okay, I understand you have lower back pain and you have shoulder pain, but I'm not going to do anything just focusing on these two body parts. I will work out with you just like you are well, but I, and I will bring you an exercise program that is well balanced and I will have to work your whole body. He was quite puzzled, but he was compliant enough. He come back week after week and within 10 months, his frozen shoulder resolved and he can play golf and can get up and about the next day. So his condition has improved significantly. And he was so determined to even play better at golf because now he's not just better. He don't need to waste time and effort battling with pain, but he can focus his energy in improving his performance in, in golf. So I have, we will have to change his uh, fitness goal from just pain free, but doing really well in golf. So you, if you are having any pain now, you have a very good chance of getting your condition improved through um, active training. So I just want to have a show of hand to the poll. How many of you are actually suffering a pain? So just to help me click on any body parts that you are currently having any pain. Is it your ankle? because you sprained your ankle previously and the pain is still there, or your bunions and your toe is giving you problems, or your knee always acts up when you take the stairs, hip, 
Kicking sound, lower back, shoulder, neck problem. Oh, you are completely pain free. You are here just to want to learn something to have the loved ones. So I'll give you maybe another five seconds for you to just tell me if you are in pain. Aha. Uh -huh. So that. The result is out, 44%, close to half of you having some kind of knee problem. Let's see what is the second one, is the shoulder. And then followed by the lower back, lower back and the neck is pretty much on par. Whoa, congratulations to 6% of you, pain-free. Very jealous of you. And I hope you maintain yeah, through active lifestyle. But the rest of you who are suffering with some pain, one form or another, so you are here at the right place. Maybe that's why you're here. But I will go through the whole body so that everybody here can bring home something um, useful for you, whether your pain is around the neck or in the shoulder or in the knees. Yeah, Because I'll explain more later why is it important to work the whole body, regardless where the pain is. So like, just like the poll results, these are the very common chronic joint pain that people complain about, the neck and shoulder, the lower back pain, the knee pain, and the toes, ankle, for example. So what actually causes all these joint problems? So sometimes we call, doctors will call it um, idiopathic, like really no idea what happened to the joints pain just come about. But some people may complain that they have uh, previous injuries, they have sprained the muscle, the ligaments. So we call them joint pathologies. Some of you may have suffered from pain after bouts of strenuous movement. Or maybe you would play the tennis and you just swing your racket a little bit too hard or swing your golf club a little bit too hard and you just sprain yourself. Some of you maybe complain about pain because of repetitive movement. You know, like uh, dentists who use tools a lot, they probably suffer from wrist pain. Or if you work around the computer, type a lot on the laptop, you also will suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome. And very often, people start to have body aches when they gain weight because when you have more fats around the abdominals, you really have thrown your spine out of, the cent out of its center and change your body alignment and give you pain. And often if we slum around at the office desk or at the sofa for a long period of time, or even if you stand uh, for a long period of time, the poor posture may give you pain as well. But what a lot of people may not realize is the lack of movement is often the culprit of body pain. I will tell you why. So we have this vicious cycle where we don't move enough. I think majority of Singaporeans, especially now that we are, we are very office bound, we work around the laptop and sitting at the meetings for long hours. And with COVID-19, I think the situation become worse because we have to sit and work from home. We don't even walk to the restaurant for lunch anymore. We don't need to go to the canteen to buy our food anymore. We just stay at home. So the chances of you sitting down at the desk it's very long. So if you don't um, consciously do some exercise, you will end up sitting for more than eight hours a day. So sedentary lifestyle will make, make you gain weight because you're not burning enough calories. And very often you probably do snacking away. And when you gain weight, it makes your joints painful, your knees and ankles start to ache when you walk and make you even more sedentary. So this is really a vicious cycle, yeah? So we really need to break out from the vicious cycle. So ask yourself, how long have you been sitting for the past week? If average you sit more than four hours without moving, or this morning you've been sitting for more than four hours without moving, time to get up, okay? Time to just get up even just to swing your arm, get the blood flow going. That will help your body a lot. So why is 
movement so important that we need to move a lot. You know, when we don't move, we have body problem or body pain. So why? So let me share with you this um, biotensegrity perspective of our human body. Many of you probably already know some basic uh, human anatomy. Like our body is made up of bones, muscle, tendon, and cartilage. Sorry about that. Just let me just so that I can see myself because I can't, I need to make sure that um, I can see my videos. Somehow I can't see my videos. Just give me one second, yeah. Ah, here we go. Okay. Sorry about the technical glitch. Can you share screen with them? Okay. Somehow I can see my own face here. So um, we are held up by bones, muscle, tendons, and cartilage. I think those of you who study basic human anatomy, you will know about all this. But what we do have besides uh, muscle and bones is something called fascia. Fascia is connective tissue, just like cartilage and tendon of connective tissue. But this kind of connective tissue is quite special. They work like a web spreading around your body everywhere, you know, from under the skin, through your joints, around your muscles, okay, underneath your skin, and become a web of tension that hold us in shape. Yeah. So we are not just hold up by uh, muscles and tendons together, but we have this web wrapping around every structure, every organ, every fat tissues that hold, bind us up together. We call that fascia. So look at this. We can look at this fascia in human body. It really wrapping around like the outer suit. So the fascia creates some tension in the body that bind us all together. From an architectural point of view, there is something called tensegrity model, which is really tension that hold the structure with integrity. They call it the tensegrity model. So if you just look at this, I will remove my virtual background so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so my Mr. Skeleton is here. So this is this is actually the Tensegrity model, a little toy. Okay, what well, I want you to take a look is to very look very carefully the sticks. Yeah, all the sticks doesn't touch each other. The sticks are not touching each other at all. Yeah, if I rotate this very slowly, they are hold in shape by all the little bungee cords. These are all elastic cords. So the bones are like the sticks here. Our human bones are like the sticks here. They're floating actually. They're floating in space and they are held up by the tension cord, which is the muscle. Okay. So if you look at my partner here, they have the skeleton have pins and bolts holding it together. Otherwise, it just falls into pieces because the muscle has been removed. But in uh, real life, we do have something like tension cord, which is our muscles and fascia, very importantly, the fascia, holding up our bone in space. Okay, and the structure is very, very intelligently designed that you can fold it, you can move our arms, yeah, in different direction and bounce back in, in original form. So this is a tensegrity model. So I just show you another model here. So our human body is very much like some loose piece of Lego. You're probably wondering what I'm doing with some Legos, right? So just imagine these are our normal bones, okay? And they are really Nothing to hold on to except some ligaments and in our today's context is the fascia. 
if you see the gray color chain, normally the bones will just fall apart. Okay. But if you have the right amount of tension, okay, the structure will hold up. You see that? They are still floating in space, but they are held up by tension. So you can see that it collapsed because the tension wasn't even. So what, were, what does that mean? That our body needs to function and stay in shape when we have a good amount equally distributed tension. So just imagine that this is your lower back, the spine, and the front is maybe your abdominals, okay? So this is the muscle at the back. And if you have one side tighter than the other, the system collapse, okay? Likewise, if I have good lower back muscle, that they're balanced, but the front is, this front chain here is not good, okay? It's too loose, the system collapse as well. So our whole body really needs uh, equal, a uh, nice, balanced, distributed force of tension in order to hold ourselves in shape and not to collapse. Yeah. So when we don't have a balanced tension around the body, whether it is our front of the body or the back, left and right side, when it's not balanced, problem starts and give you pain before it really completely give way and collapse. I put away my toys. And then I'll share screen again. So that those are tensegrity models. So how does this apply to the human body? So tensegrity model very simplistic form. So there are people in the research area actually try to rebuild using tension cord and sticks to simulate our human legs and even our spinal column and even the full body. Yeah, so we call it tensegrity model application in human body. So they call it the biotensegrity model. So as I mentioned, everything in the body is connected by fascia. Remember the web like that cling wrap that bind everything together that create tension around the body. So because this web is continuous from the head to the neck, torso, all the way to the ankle, you really can't isolate a single body part. Don't look at it like, oh, this is my bicep because the bicep is just how we decided to cut at this part. So I call it the bicep, but the bicep was linked to the chest. The chest linked to your to the lower back as well. So you can't isolate body part and you can't also isolate movements by body part. And often pain is just a symptom. If you have lower back pain, like many of you mentioned just now, but 37% of you suffering right now, lower back pain and neck pain is really not the cause. You can have many, many MRI scans over that place. You don't find a structural damage, or maybe some of you have structural damage already. But fixing it may not really completely remove the pain. So why? It's because a lot of time pain is just a symptom. It's telling you that something is not balanced and the problem may come from elsewhere. Okay. And your shoulder pain is really not in the shoulder. Okay. Remember uh, the case I shared with you, Mr. Tan, he has frozen shoulder, but I didn't really do anything particularly to twist his shoulder. He didn't have a so shoulder surgery. But just by increasing his core strength and increasing his hip movement, miraculously, his shoulder pain resolved. Because in this case, shoulder pain is just a symptom. His cause of the pain comes from elsewhere. So how do you know where? You probably need to see um, a professional to find out if you have any limitation in other body parts that will require another lecture. But today I will share with you a little bit more about like maintenance program, how you can actually take care of the whole body so that the pain in one particular area will resolve. So this is a diagram that show how our body parts 
are linked. Okay, we try to simplify so that it's easier for you to understand like there is a front line here. If you can see the cursor, the front line that link from the front of the neck to the front of the torso, the front of your legs. Then we have a posterior, the back line. These, all these muscles here are linked from the top of your crown to your heel. So often when my client asks me, my friend asks me, I have neck pain, I will tell them, please stretch your hamstring, your back of the leg. They give me the funny look like, huh? I just told you about the neck. Why are you asking me to stretch, stretch my legs? Because as you can see from this little blue line, the neck is directly linked to the fascia, to your hamstring. So in order to resolve your neck problem, you probably will work on your legs instead. And you know we sit a lot. So our legs tighten a lot and that give pressure to the legs. And if you look at these spiral lines, if I just bring your attention to the spiral line here, that is coming from the heel, the outer side of the heel, that cross over the back of the legs and coming up to the opposite shoulder. You can see that is a diagonal there. So how does it affect us? Give you an example. I believe many of you play golf here, and you can probably see this, or you can recognize this movement. So when you want to have a beautiful swing, you don't just swing your arms or shoulder, but you're actually using a huge muscle here called the latissimus dorsi, which is on your back, which is diagonally linked to the glutes and to the outer part of your thigh. Remember this diagram that I showed you just now is diagonally from the left shoulder go towards the right side, yeah? So you need to get, make sure the whole line, whole connected line work properly. If there's any jamming, some flow of force that is not smooth, like, oh, because there's some limitation in the ribs, the force may just stop there. And imagine every time you jam force at one particular point, that point will break down. So for the case of Mr. Tan, very likely because his upper back was so stiff. So whenever he go to the golf course, he try to drive the golf swing, the force would just jam up right around the scapula, the shoulder blade and shoulder area and causing him a lot of pain at the area after weeks of golf games. So if you want to resolve the problem, is really try to get the whole diagonal line work properly, let the force flow through, no more stuck or clogged up movements, and that will save the joint and remove the pain. So we talk about fascia and how it connects the whole body. So very importantly is how then we keep our fascia happy, okay? So first of all, we need to know that fascia is made out of largely water. So drink up, hydrate regularly. But drinking is one thing, yeah? You drink too much, you will just pass out uh, when you urine, right? So what is, the, what is the thing about drinking and then let the water, the fluid go to the muscles and go to the fascia to keep the whole fascia system happy, okay? The fascia needs to be moved. It's just like a sponge, yeah? It absorbs water and then it just, ooh, just elongate and lengthen and give you space to move properly. So if you're dehydrated, you don't move, you, with all the gravity, dehydration, the entire joint will just shrink, collapse, compressing. But once you add in the fluid, you open up, yeah? The fascia will give you a lot more space springy space, you open up the web. So you need to keep moving so the fascia can absorb the water. There are also quick fix like stimulation, rolling, massage. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure many of you find that massage really help. Yes, massage does help because with the mechanical movement from the surface, we kind of push a fluid, spreading it around the fascia. But Really, if you sit eight hours a day, over seven days, that is a like good 50 over hours of sitting and lack of movement in your joints, 
giving yourself just that one hour massage is not going to be enough unless you go for massage every single day three hours each time and then your pain will finally be resolved so yes if you are really in severe pain feel free to have that massage you know to give you the quick relief but to really solve the problem in the long run you need to move regularly and today i'm going to show you how to move efficiently so it saves time for you yeah so we need to move but how and that's what i'm going to share with you so i'm going to use um a whole body approach but first of all i want to remind you is that whatever movement you choose make sure you enjoy them okay oftentimes when i tell friends hey you gotta, you gotta move more and they will be like huh i need to run now but i hate running oh I, I i'm not a good runner it's okay you really don't need to run if you don't enjoy it if you love running go ahead if you love dancing even better go and dance okay you don't need to stop whatever you enjoy keep moving do things that you like and if you like to just take a slow walk in the park and enjoy the greenery why not go for it yeah but what you really need to remember is do many different kind of exercise and movement diversity in movement is important because certain sports tend to only use selected part of the body okay if you play golf you know that you can swing on one side much better than the other because you just keep moving in that direction or even if you play tennis your right arm will be so much stronger and tighter than the left because you just keep using more of one arm so you want to use different kind of sports different kind of movements so your whole body is being involved so remember move a lot move what you enjoy different kind of movement and move every part of your body because the fascia is all linked remember you don't just want to keep training a single part so my approach to you uh, today will be the whole body approach so please bear with me i will be moving in and out of the slides um, i will stop sharing the slides so i can show you the exercises please move with me the exercises that i'm going to share with you will be very gentle but still you have to move within your pain-free range okay you don't need to go excessive like oh i have a this just like how to reason look on the screen you don't need to as long as you feel some tension in certain movement you can just stay there so my approach and i want you to remember is our body needs mobility in certain places and needs stability mobility means how well we can move stability means rigid how good control it will be yeah and we need a balance of that bodybuilders are really really strong so they are very stable but they are too rigid so if you ask them to do a golf swing or climb the climb the rock wall they will have problems in the shoulder because they are just too stable for certain movement but likewise if you look at gymnasts really flexible arms and legs but they get a lot of injury in the joints because they may lack the stability in to in controlling and safeguarding the body so you want both mobility and stability so right here i show you the body part take a look at this interesting skeleton you have i want stability in the neck followed by mobility in the thoracic spine which is a mid back and you want stable lumbar spine and very mobile hip stable knee joints and mobile ankle yeah so you you can see that it is stack is uh, alternating alternating between mobility and stability this is because you want the force to flow through smoothly from your foot on the ground going up the body so it's alternating between mobility and stability so today i'm going to get you move the whole body each body part will do a very simple movement starting from your feet you don't need to be wearing any shoes okay so i will stop sharing the slides for a while we'll come back here so i'll adjust my camera so you can see the feet okay you don't see me yet yeah yeah okay this is skeleton the feet all the 
all the little bones and joints in the feet. Okay, this is looking from the bottom of your feet. You can see that it is made up of tiny little bones here, many, many joints, because your feet are supposed to work like a spring to absorb the shock. Every time you walk, you want to have your whole feet nicely create a springy movement to take away the ground force. But as you wear a lot of very stable shoes, your whole feet just kind of stuck, okay? Become very rigid. So today I want to show you a simple self-massage. Okay, so pardon to see my feet yeah, over here. So I want you to have barefoot and just shift my laptop a little bit. Okay. All right, so you want to hold on to your forefoot with one hand and the other holding on to the midfoot and you just do a little twist. Of course, you can also do it this way. So it's creating like a ringing, ringing towel kind of movement because you really want to mobilize the entire feet. Okay. So ring, ring, ring. So please do it with me yeah, so you can see how it feels like. Okay. So after that, use a hand to bring the toes up and keep them spreading out. And point it, point the toes down. You want more mobility here in your foot. And even your ankle joints here, your heel, supposed to be mobile actually. So you want to hold on to the midfoot and the other hand, hold on to the heel and give that little twist. And same thing for the other feet. Yeah? So you want to have again one side and the other hand. Just give that twist. So you are moving all your little joints, little bone in the feet so that it can become a spring. So pointing down, feel the little stretch on top of your foot and flex, bring your toes up. Spread them out. You know, that's time massage, you always pull your toes, right? That's the reason they want to open up, give some space in the entire area. And don't forget holding on to the ankle and then holding on to the midfoot and twist. You probably feel one side, one foot is more mobile than the other. For me, I have sprained my left ankle a lot when I was younger, and that side is not so happy when I do this. Yeah, particular direction when I twist, I find achy. Yeah, so all the more when you feel that your left and right feet are not balanced, you know that you need to do more for the stiffer side. Okay, so just giving it a twist. All right, back up here. Sorry for the mess. And then I will just share screen, go back to the slides again. Okay, so the ankle is the most selected part. There are many, many joints. And remember, our feet are the first thing that touch the floor. So if you take up a lot of ground force, you want it to work like the way it's designed to be like a spring system. So too much rigid footwear, and if you always walk on concrete ground like we do always in the city, city people, right? Urban people always walking on hard flooring. So that is quite, quite brutal on our joints. So you want to strengthen the foot muscle and increase mobility to let them work like a spring. Then we'll move up to our knees. I will talk about the hip and knees together. Many of you have knee pain. But I want to tell you the problem is not in the knee. 
is because there's problem in the hip and ankle. Okay, remember just now I talked about ankle knee mobility and you look at the hip, you also need to have a mobile hip. But with so much sitting, we lose our mobility in the hip. So the movement that's supposed to come from the hip joint is no longer happening in the hip, but rather we are twisting through the knee. So that is a big problem because the knee is not designed to, to twist. Yeah, very little twisting should be allowed. So that is where we start to tear the ligaments. Yeah. So what we want to do is two things if you have knee pain, for people with knee pain, which is like the number one problem here, right? If you have knee pain, remember this, you want to have strong knees and a mobile hip. So very working well hip and a very strong knee. Okay. So these are the muscles that are involved what it need to be strong, you need to stretch or what is weak, but forget about all this, yeah? Even some trainers have problems remember which is which, okay? Don't worry, okay? You will get the slides to see the knees, but just follow me in this exercise that can help you one shot strengthen your knee and improve your mobility. So I'll stop sharing and then please move with me. So I'll move up a little bit and I will bring the chair to the back. Okay, please use a steady chair. So this is okay. Even though you can't really see my face, it's okay. But hold on to the chair so for balance, and you just squat down and up. So this is my side view. I want to show you the side view because. I don't want you to have your knee pointing forward. So you really want to sit back. If I show you the front view, you can hold it onto the chair for balance. Going down. Yeah. Almost like sitting down on the chair. So for some of you who are starting out, you want me to use the chair. Okay, I call you sit to stand. Okay, really from sitting, you go up. Down, up. So, like almost like a hot stone on a chair, you want to have a light touch. Oh, get bounced back up. So, it pulls you into a very good posture, sitting back behind. You wouldn't lean forward, so keep the body upright. This has a very good effect to strengthen your knees. This is my number one go to exercise, okay? If you have no time to do anything else, do this. All right. I ask my parents or anybody who stopped exercising for a long time to do this chair squat or to stand movement. Do it like you're eating a meal. You eat three times a day, right? So you can do this three times a day or so. Each time, 10 reps. Okay. So one, two, three. Four, five, six. So if you want me to have balance, challenge yourself in balance, you can have your hands up. If not holding on to the chair, it's perfectly fine. You start to feel your quads, the front of the thighs, and feel a bit tired. And if you are stronger, do it with the chair. So this will work your thigh right away. And the thigh muscle is the one that's holding on to your knee. So if you always feel like your legs are really sore going up to the stairs, these are the muscles that you need to work on. Okay, you can walk longer, you can go up the stairs, you can get in and out of the car easily. You can climb the staircase because you use squat toilet, you don't need to up for the, the toilet bowl anymore because your legs, once your legs have strength, you carry your knees properly, you can walk without pain anymore. Yeah. So just now I mentioned about knee strength, but you also need hip mobility. Okay. Hip mobility, this is my favorite exercise. I'm going to point it down because I'm going to squat. So you can just squat down and right away your hip into a very, very nice angle. Yeah. 
Some of you may find it really difficult to try it. Hold onto the chair, squat down. You may find that it's not so comfortable and which is okay. Some of you may need to have our have your feet lifted up. That show that your ankle is too stiff. Okay, but you just hang in there. Eventually, you'll be able to bring down the heel and you just get into this position a little bit longer time, maybe five minutes a day. And very soon, this is actually a stretch already. Your hip will get back into the, the mobility and then your ankle will have some more mobility as well. Okay, so when I first started this exercise, it is really painful after 10 seconds, but now I can probably squat for half an hour. So you slowly build towards it. Yeah. And then if you can't get up at first, use your hand, get your step up front, use your hand like a little gorilla to get up. And then using your hand, pushing on to something to get you up. But eventually, once you build up enough leg strength, you can get up nicely. I'll go with the chair again. So are you taking notes? Do squats and just squat down all the way and that will give you the mobility. So to help, once you have good hip mobility and strong knees, your knee pain will, will improve. Now we will move on to moving up the body to the lower back. So lower back is our lower part of the spine. Okay. It's often the location of pain. Okay. So you want it to be strong and stable in this lumbar area. Okay. I always will recommend to have strong abdominals because your abdominal is the muscle and with a lot of fascia around this area. To hold up the to hold up the lumbar spine. So especially if you are someone who are suffering from um slip disc, slip disc is actually like the squish out uh disc. It's because the whole lumbar spine collapsed. You want to use your internal internal pressure, the tensegrity, to open it back up. So one way to improve the lumbar stability is to make use of the inner unit, the false closure. So if you imagine our torso area is like a, a Coca-Cola can, yeah, a soft drink can. If it's a brand new can, you try to step on it, you put a brand new can of soft drink on the floor, you try to step on it, right? You, you can even stand, put your whole body weight on it and the can will not be compressed. But the moment you open up the can, maybe pour away the liquid and you step on it again, the can can be compressed, can be completely flattened. And that's the thing, when there's internal pressure in the can, whether it is the, the soft drink or whether it is the car uh, carbon dioxide in there, that kind of internal pressure supports the spine, supports the organs and all. So how did our body behave like a nice, an open can is by four major area that work together. On the back, we have something called multifidus along the spine area, while the front, we have our abdominals muscle. The top of the can is the diaphragm, while the bottom of the can is actually our pelvic floor. These four major areas work together and come together to create the internal pressure. We call that the inner unit. And it's the inner unit that supports this lumbar area. So what we can do is by having abdominal bracing. Okay, so what is abdominal bracing? I'm going to show you this. So, so just pay attention to my postural area. Okay, this area here. Okay, if I completely let go of my abdominals, I will be very unglad, okay? Okay, I'm tightening my clothes. Can you see the, this is not fat, yeah? these are loosened muscles, okay? So what you want to do is, let the loosened muscle contract, so you draw the belly button in very gently, and your spine will actually lengthen. 
So we one more time up by relax the abdominals. I do a gentle bracing. I draw the belly button in. My entire spine and head lengthen. So all the whole system, the front and the back, the side, the top, and the bottom pelvic floor will all come together to create the internal pressure, the inner unit. So I'll share the screen again. So walk around with that tension there, a very slight drawing in of the abdominals to support the lower back, okay? So you will often see that people who have a loosened abdominals who walk with a sway back, a very big curve here. Yeah. So if you draw this tummy in, it supports the lumbar spine and lengthen the lumbar spine for you. Next thing is my favorite that I want to talk about. So thoracic spine. So in short, I will call it a T spine. Yeah? Our spine is very long, so the T spine is the thoracic area. It reduces mobility of the thoracic spine. So just let me show you using my skeleton friend here. So look at this skeleton here. All right, so this is the front view, yeah, where you have the lumbar spine here, the thoracic spine, and then the neck. So turn it around. The thoracic area, T spine, there's a 12 of them. This part of the spinal column each connect to a rib. The rib is important, of course, they protect your heart and lungs, but at the same time, it blocks the movement of the spine. So this part of the spine is very, very rigid, okay? So whenever you need to bend down, you need to twist your body, you need to start bending, this part hardly moves. And the movement all happens here in the neck and in the lumbar spine. And that's why you always hear people complaining, I have neck pain, I have low back pain, but you seldom hear anybody say, tell you that I have mid back pain, okay? This is so rigid, you probably feel stiff, but they won't hurt you. All the movement, all the excessive movement, all jam up in these two areas, giving you neck pain and lower back ache. So how then, if you have neck pain and lower back ache, I want you to move your mid back a lot more. Okay, so that the force from the ground can move smoothly throughout and going up. All right, you don't want the force to be stuck in this area and damaging the mobile parts. All right, so how can we move our thoracic spine? Let me put it down first. Okay. So, one thing, first of all, is that we can make use of our breathing. We all have different breathing styles, so find out your own breathing style as well. Put one hand here, the other hand at your tummy. Okay, and take a deep breath. more time and check which hand feel more movement do you feel more movement in the tummy or is it up in the chest so both are correct okay there's no right or wrong breathing method some people will breathe like this you feel more movement in the other hand some people will breathe through the abdominals both are correct it's just your stuff okay our lungs expand Three dimensionally, okay. So when we breathe, it's open in the front, going top, going to the front, and going to the bottom as well, just like this. Breathe out, close up. So our ribs also moving big when we breathe in, and the ribs contract, come back down as we breathe out. Yeah. So we sit all the time driving at the desk or over the laptop. Our arms not moving, our ribs are also closed. The ribs can't really open up anymore. So we always have to breathe through this part or through here. So it's like an elongated balloon that can only open up on the top and the bottom because down here are also seats. 
Okay, so and that will block the spine movement as well. So now what I want you to do is do a little breathing exercise. You can have your hands out on the side. Yeah, you can either put it this way or this way. So you want to be fighting, okay? Let your ribs expand and exhale. Expand into your head, the sideways breathing. Combined with what you learned just now, the breathing, yeah? So if the tummy is all loose, draw it in. So again, uh, you will see carefully. From letting go, draw the belly button in gently. Don't suck it in so much that uh, cannot breathe, okay? So gentle draw in and keep it there. Maintain the tension in the tummy, supporting the lower back. Then breathing in and out. One more time. The hands are there to give you the resistance that you're pushing it against it. And one more time, yeah? Now let's try with our arms down. So no, no more have the hands to remind you, but just arm relax and breathing. Expanding the armpit. Two more. Try to think about your upper back. Also expand, yeah, the upper back. Expanding with the air. Okay, do the breathing exercise very often when you're driving red light. Breathe. Open the ribs tightly. And then one. More on the thing that we do is using a chair or the table. Okay, just spend away, have some space away from the chair or the table. Your arm resting on the back of the chair. Doesn't matter how tall it is, yeah. So I'm bending to the hip and I sink down my chest. So try it with me, yeah. So just relax it and then whenever you feel that oh, I have a bit of stretch in my shoulder or more importantly in my upper back area yeah that would be good so your chest going down and a bit more of an upper back bending and then rounding the back and sinking down again so you can see my spine actually now is concave down now it's rounding up And then one more, very gently. Yeah, just sink the chest down, and that will help your upper back move a bit more. And let's take this back. Yeah. So we have done some ribs opening and then thoracic extension, arching the spine. We can also do a bit of rotation here. Just turn to one side and I just crack my spine when I turn. So turn to one side using your arm, holding onto the chair, holding onto your legs. Like wringing the towel, you know, so your waistline goes smaller. And then the outside. So you can do this when you're having a meeting, right? Doesn't matter what clothes you're wearing, whether it's office wear, wearing a jacket. You just have a gentle twist. Even if you're sitting in a cafe waiting for a long time, just give your spine a little twist, okay? So you can give a bit of movement back in your entire spine. So that is a thoracic spine. Remember to move it a lot through your breath work. And through the rib mobilization movement I did just now behind the chair. And then I'm moving up to the neck and the shoulder. Neck and shoulder are always together. The neck and the shoulder blade are so close to one another. So if you look at the Mr. Skeleton here, that is, this is the back of the, the back of you. This is your shoulder blade and your shoulder. So when you move your shoulder, it will move the shoulder blade as well. So, and they are connected to a lot of muscles and fascia to the neck. So sometimes when your shoulders have problems, they are probably related to the neck and vice versa. Okay, this entire area we call the shoulder neck complex. 
that is whole area integrated. Okay, and like I mentioned just now, usually the problems here, pain in the neck, pain in the shoulder, it really is not caused by this box. Okay, it's because of the thoracic spine. So what I have shown you just now, remember do a lot, okay, move your upper body thoracic spine area that will solve your problem in the neck and in the shoulder. But if your shoulder down is really aching very badly, so just follow me in this exercise. Yeah, okay. So interlace your finger. So interlace your finger here. Yeah. yeah, put it behind the neck, the bottom of the scalp here. Yeah. If we call it the isometric stretch, okay? So you want to hand and your neck do a little fighting, okay? So my head, my neck press into my palm. One more time. And press. And one more time, pressing again. So if you have been seeing a physio, probably they will ask you to do this in the same thing, okay? But I just ask you to do a little extra movement here. So I love this because it gives, it's like a self-massage. So you want to rise the shoulder up. You can get a, and squeeze it a little bit. And then just a little gentle, gentle movement like that. And relax. One more time. So shoulders shrugging up. So you're tensing up the muscle. Squeezing, squeezing. Remember the sponge, the fascia, you want to squeeze, squeeze. So that when you release the tension, the fluid can flow back into the area. One more time. We're adding in shoulder roll as well. Yeah? So squeezing out. So squeezing out the fluid in the fascia, in the muscles. And as you come back down, you squeeze the shoulder blade together, back. Yeah, you prepare shoulder roll, okay? One more time. Squeezing up, sponging up. A little gentle squeeze in the neck. And roll down. Shoulder squeeze together. One more time, yeah? Really feel the sponging up, the tension in the neck. And come down, shoulder down, and then neck lengthen. So this is a very, very handy movement that I do a lot. And then I love to just bring my neck sideways. Feel the lengthening here. Center. And the other side. Stretch this very tight muscles. Ooh, so in just a 20 minutes or so, we move from our feet, mobility the feet, center the knee, move the hip, support the lumbar spine, move the thoracic spine, and also try to mobilize the neck as well. So that is the, my today whole body approach. So if you can do all those exercises regularly throughout the day, please do so. And these are some of the common exercises that Pilates that I mentioned, yoga, tai chi, functional movement that you will hear a lot if you go to the gym. They all work with a very similar principle, which is to guide your body to move very mindfully. Because all these movement methods, they will try to raise your postural awareness, they work your core muscles, strengthening the abdominals area. And also make sure you have a neuromuscular pathway improvement. Improve mobility that I mentioned and increase the stability in certain joints. Yeah, so these are some exercises that you can consider going uh, if you are starting out. And importantly, you can't remember my anything today. Just remember this very important point. If you feel ache anywhere, just keep moving. Yeah, don't need to be drastically going out to run. Even just some rocking on the chair, some gentle arm swing, 
body side movement is going to get you the fluid back into the fascia, into the all around the joints. Yeah, keep moving so that the fluid can flow back into the joints and into the fascia system. Yeah, and that will be the end of my lecture today. Maybe we can have some questions. Any, let me see, Q&A. All right, so you can vote up and down, yeah? Does needling and acupuncture alleviate pain? If yes, how? Well, that is a completely uh, different dimension. For acupuncture, the TCM, they are working to stimulate the meridian, okay? Uh, exactly how it works from the Western point of view, it has not been uh, proven. Uh, as in, it has not been fully explained from the Western perspective. Because Chinese medicine and Western um, medicine, how they develop the system is very different. Okay? Western method is more by observation, experimental method, but my TCM is usually based on the series and then they evolve uh, certain treatment and they find that it's uh, helpful. But in short, it is by stimulating the nervous system, the meridian system. For needling, if I'm not wrong, because I'm, I'm not a practitioner, if I'm not wrong, that is uh, dry needling, meaning that they are also going down under the skin where the meridian system or the nervous system is located. So they want to give some either through nerve block or by stimulation to stimulate another area. Yeah. So I am not the practitioner. So if you want to know more, maybe I can link you up with the practitioner. Yeah? But yes, in short, many of the clients have feedback that it has a UV pain. Uh, we don't rule out like, oh, you don't go to massage or you don't go for uh, acupuncture. We believe in working complementarily. You go for whatever short-term relief that have you stop the pain right away so that you can move freely. Next one. Is it normal? Okay, why do my right knee give in occasionally? Ah, yes, my mom has exactly the same problem. Uh, she has mild osteoarthritis and suddenly she just, she feel like it lost track and, and, and the whole knee just bend while she's walking. Not necessarily over the stairs, yeah, even flat ground, yeah. So it's because the muscle have no strength suddenly. The, remember the joints are free bones, yeah. There are just few pieces of skeleton hanging up in space. You need the muscle to support it. So you need that kind of muscle tension to hold up the skeleton. And the muscle is not strong enough and don't have the stamina. So it just, just suddenly give way, lose the tension. And that's why you feel the giving way sensation. Try the sit to stand exercise. Of course, starting with support, hand holding on to the some, something. My mom had significant improvement in just two weeks. She feel that she can walk faster, a bit more confidently. You do it every day, it will definitely help. Yeah. Okay, then is it normal to feel pain in the knee when you do squat? It's not normal. <laughs> Usually if you feel pain is a matter of alignment, the technique itself. Uh, so if you move backwards, let me switch off that right. That's the sunset, so my room is not going down. So if I show you this, okay, most people when they do squat, they do this. They are leaning forward. Okay, can you see my knee there? My knee go forward, and this kind of force going forward is very stressful for the knee. And that is not good. Yeah, I want you to throw the bum backwards. So it's all whenever you do squat, for those of you feeling pain when you do squat, start with the chair first. So the chair will guide you where to move. So your bum always want to go back to the chair. And just think about going to the toilet, you know, the toilet bowl is behind, you want to improperly. You don't want to slide forward, yeah? And that you should have no pain at all. Okay? And your knee should be in line with the hip. If it's a bit twisted out, and that is where you give pain as well. So your toes, so if you can see my toes, 
is not pointed out and the knee point in the wrong way, my toes and my knee should point in the same direction. Okay, next question. Can one when to hip replacement and do the sitting and standing exercise? Uh, yes, unless the surgeon told, tell you no, no. But if your surgeon allow you to walk around, get down to the chair, I don't see a big problem for you to do this repeated movement up and down. As long as you keep your legs parallel to one another. Yeah, that will be the safest angle. So check with your surgeon. Is there any contraindication like something? Definitely no, no. Okay, depending on the method, uh, some of the hip replacement uh, disallow internal like uh, knee inwards, okay? But the newer generation of surgery give you a pretty good range. So speak to the surgeon or physiotherapist what is not allowed, but simple stuff like from the chair, stand up, if you are not told not to sit down or get up, right? This is really safe. Okay, and then just let me take a look. Is it okay to have cracking sound when doing squats? Yes. <laughs> The cracking sound is really just ligaments rubbing around the joints because maybe the joint is dehydrated, the fascia is dehydrated and there's a lot of compression in the joints. So mm -hmm. the ligament just rub around. Yeah, so that's why you hear the cracking sound. Okay, especially if you're doing body weight squat, you're not carrying the big barbell, you're not adding extra weight. That is actually fine. How does squat actually move the pelvic? How the squat, I am not too sure what do you mean by that. Um, well, the pelvis, the pelvis actually move because it's linked to your leg muscle. Okay, this is your leg, yeah? So the hip socket is into your pelvis. So whenever you move the pelvis, you move your legs, your pelvis will move as well. They have to move because they are all connected. I hope I have answered that question. <coughs> what is the solution to hamstring pull behind the thigh? This pull makes stretching the leg difficult. If you feel the pull in the hamstring, the back of the thigh, that means it's really tight. So just have to do more. Yeah. Uh, it's very common because we sit down all the time and the leg is bent, yeah, it's in a bent position for a long hour. So the back of the thigh is shortened. It's a very common problem. Uh, especially for gentlemen with usually with stronger leg muscle. Strong usually means I think we lost Teresa. Right, I guess we just lost Teresa. Um, we're just waiting for her to come online again. So bear with us for a minute. If you have some more questions to, to ask Teresa, could you please um, type them in right now uh, as we wait for her to log in again. Thank you very much. If some of the questions are important to you, um, you may not, you do, you do not need to retype them. You can just uh, click the uh, thumbs up. And, uh, and from there, we know that uh, these questions are really, really important to you. And uh, we will give priority to that. Okay, I'm back. All right, welcome back. So sorry, you just got cut off. <laughs> okay, I'm back here and uh, so, where should I go? 
um, the, the questions available, uh, the, the, the first question here is that, what do you think of rebounding mini trampoline for mm. those with joint pains? Ah, interesting one. <laughs> okay, uh, mini trampoline means that you take away the shock from jumping because jumping generally, uh, 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 like the, the force itself is not so good, right, for pain. Uh, however, because of mini trampoline, the whole surface that you jump on is soft. So it require it also requires a great sense of control. So if you are already having joint pain, so it's important to do a very thorough warm-up and do mini jump first. So don't just go up and because of so fun, right? And then start to do a very, very big jump and then do a lot of twisting movement. Because if you have joint pain, mainly mechanically you have a, a little bit of movement. Uh, uh, error in the entire body system. So you want to find out any any particular stiffness in certain places that the force is stuck before you're jumping too much on the trampoline. But then again, like I mentioned, some movement is better than no movement, right? If you enjoy it, go for it. But just remember, have a lot of warm-up and don't just count on the mini trampoline alone. Do different form of exercise as well. So I hope I answered that question. Okay, the next question, uh, Fraser, mm. is are there any exercise for pain in fingers from repetitive movement strain? Mm. Uh, first of all, you need to identify where did the pain come from. It could be from the neck, okay? Um, so you probably want to rule out, is it from the neck issues? If it's purely from the wrist, then you need to do a lot of uh, wrist stretching on both ways. Yeah. So stretching up, stretching down, and do gentle movement. Yeah. So you want to, all this stretching really helps to get the nerve to move in and out of the, the canal. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, sorry, one more thing is you also want to strengthen as well. You want to squeeze on some uh, towel, you twist some towel, so you strengthen up the forearm muscle and that will support your wrist. Right. I think related to that, um, to add on, how about stiffness in the finger joints? What kind of exercise can we do? Stiffness and finger joint, uh, have to think about, is it related to metabolic issues like uh, osteoarthritis or gout? So if, if the person is suffering from one of those, you have to get the medical side, you know, mother medication or, or adjusting the diet to have you resolve. Uh, but if it's just because of lack of movement or it's a nerve issue, so you have to probably try to differentiate, is it tingling, which is a nerve issue, or is it just general weakness? <laughs> so again, squeezing a, a stress ball, Squeezing a towel will help because you are working the muscle, you're pumping in the fluid back in the joint. Yeah. Okay, great. Next question. Can you recommend which exercise movement should my 80-year-old mother, I think I lost that. Uh, should, should my 80-year-old mother do as she often complain of a, of a pain right hip and foot? Mm. So an 80-year-old, lady with uh, complaints of pain right hip and foot i think can definitely uh when the recording is up you can recall back the exercises that the foot massage then sit to stand which right away help you address both the knee and the hip as well use that as a start in fact some um older people find that sit to stand you know the chair squat is already quite challenging so get them to keep doing two maybe daily, three times, like three meals, uh, 10 reps per meal time, just to get the basic strength first. Then subsequently, you can add on a little bit more. I think after the Q&A, I can share a, a li little Facebook page, which I set up, I can talk a little bit more later. Okay, yeah. great. Um, next question. If my joint pain is due to arthritis, are the exercise different? Mm, I would say 
yes for a start yeah because it's painful and when when we're in pain we kind of compensate like, ah, don't move so much on the painful side right the whole body may miss a line so what we often recommend is of course without seeing you i can't actually assess the condition but generally what we recommend people with arthritis with the pain is to work with a smaller range of movement meaning that if let's say the whole movement is supposed to be from here all the way to the end, we will make sure that in a smaller pain-free range first and slowly work towards the full range. And very importantly, we don't lock the joint. Yeah. So this is straightened arm, but some people are so flexible they can just lock the joint further. And and the locking of the joint is where the bone starts to hit the bone surface. So you want to uh, avoid that, we call that an end range. Uh, we don't want to go all the way to the end range where the cartilage or the bone surface start to touch. So you want to stay within a control almost to the end, you can feel the muscle is still working and you're going to bend back. So likewise, I'm just using my elbow to show you same thing for the knee, if you are talking about the knee. Don't lock the knee all the way, so almost to the end you've got to stop so that your muscle is always in control, your muscle is always supporting the joint. Okay. How can we arrange for consultation with you? Where are you located for consultation? I think we can send that, uh, <laughs> send that information to them later yes, on. Uh, yeah. I will share with, uh, later on, I can show back my slides, which uh, they, can, they can contact me through LinkedIn and through my Facebook page as well. All right, that's good. Now this, is, this one is interesting. Does wearing knee guards, etc., help actually? I think a lot of people is going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> you want the truth? <laughs> okay, um, well, if you need something that gives you confidence so that you move around with confidence, you feel that I am not so scared about moving around, go for it. It is uh, psychological help. And if you after surgery, that the surgeon don't want the hard work to go to the drain, you accidentally move too much, then yes, using a guard to support will be good. But never ever make any guards like something you depend on all the time. You still want to train up your muscle. The problem with guards, like wrist guards, knee guards, or, or even lumbar guards, right, is the more you use it, you are dependent on it, and your muscles don't get the strengthening. So you want to still train up your muscle. So what I recommend is immediately if you have acute sharp pain, yes, you can wear that to protect. Yeah, but regularly take it off, move because usually when you wear a guard, your joint is stiffened, right? Regularly move so that you can pump the fluid back into the fascia and strengthen. Let the muscle do the job. So you you can finally remove the guard and your muscle will holding the joint for you. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Okay. Uh, that's, that's wonderful to hear that. Next question. Uh, we have a few more minutes. I so will take some more questions. What is the solution to a hamstring pull behind the thigh? This mm. pull makes stretching that leg difficult. Uh, work with a smaller range first. Okay, we don't need to be a dancers. All right. Uh, I will always feel that if you can bring your leg up to almost 90 degree to the hip, is quite good, yeah. But if let's say, like my husband, he cannot bring his leg up more than his knee height, and that is going to give him a lot of neck pain because, like I mentioned earlier, the hamstring connect to through the fascia all the way up to the neck. So just work with a smaller range first, like you're using a towel to hold on to your feet, so you can have some tightness. So you feel the tension and hold the stretch at the tension point. Slowly so by bit you will improve. So you it takes time. So don't try to be too ambitious. One time you can touch your toes. No, slowly. <laughs> okay, great. Um, another interesting question. I have poor posture since young. My shoulders are hunched when I walk. How can I improve my posture to avoid pain on my upper back? Hmm. Uh, if it's since young, of course, uh, there could be genetic component. Uh, genetic means the bone shape itself is a little bit different because all of us, our bone general shape is the same, but exact surface, you know, the angle, the groove, right, is a bit different. So maybe you can look at your family members. They may have similar body uh, posture. Yeah, that is genetic. 
and it could be structural. But on top of that, we can always try to enhance what you have. Okay, if you have a slouch shoulder, okay, meaning that the muscle between the shoulder blade is uh, rather weak. Okay, if I take out the skeleton, uh, this is your back view, the shoulder blades are here. So there are muscles here, we call the rhomboid, and a lot of back muscle covering the top as well. So those muscles need to be strengthened. And I think in Asian culture, unless you are athletes or go to the gym regularly, I think Asian culture-wise, we don't lift enough weight. So, we, we, and now we don't even go grocery, right? We do online shopping, we don't carry a lot of heavy things. So, we are lack of strength. So, strength is very important in holding up to the shape. So, if you want to improve a posture, you may want to find out what are the muscles that is too weak. And at the same time, the front muscle maybe is too tight. So, you need to open the front and strengthen up the back. Okay, great. We have a few more minutes. I think we'll take uh, two more questions. Um, this question is uh, it's interesting. Are there, are there exercises suitable for someone who has a deformed spine to practice? Hmm. Deformed? I probably need to know what do you mean by deformed? There are lots and lots of deformities in the spine, okay, scoliosis, like the sideway curve, we have um, osteopenia, we have uh, uh, stenosis. So really different, uh, different problems in the spine have to be treated differently. So what I recommend is to find someone who is trained, either a physiotherapist, or if you get some fitness trainer who are also trained, like from the exercise medicine network, they are also trained to handle uh, stabilize uh, people with certain conditions. But the good news is no matter what problem you have in the spine or deformity in the spine, you can still exercise. You should be actually. Because without exercise, the problem may, may uh, deteriorate further. Like somebody with a hunched back, maybe because of an injury, a structural issue in the upper back, the, the curve will increase uh, with time if you don't exercise. So you just need to find out uh, from the, the certified professional, what are the muscle need to be strengthened, what needs to be stretched, what to avoid, but definitely you can exercise. Okay, um, we'll take the one last question here and the rest we will answer uh, uh, separately, okay, um, by providing the, uh, the answers uh, in the type form. The, the last question we have here is, you sh let me say, um, I do squats every day, but since last week, my right knee became a little loose and sometimes cracked. I don't know what it means by cracked. And my right hip becomes stiff and aches. Oh, well, if it's a body weight squat, so maybe you can try a variety. I play with the feet angle move, like whether it's the legs parallel or the legs point out. Or in just now, when I demonstrate, I just squat down all the way to the floor, right? Just do a bit of uh, that movement, that just squat down on the floor. So you will find that some body part will start to ache. Like if you have a very tight sheen, the sheen will start to burn first. Or if your hip is really restricted, you will find that the hip is really bothering you. In that position, whatever is tight will get stretched. Whatever is weak will get to work, uh, work on. So you can try that, yeah? But also you have to examine if you have done other kind of exercise and have accidentally injured your, your right side. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Teresa. I think we have come to the end of the session. Uh, we run out of time. For the rest of the questions, we will answer you offline and send that uh, answers to you. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Teresa for uh, showing us some exercises and, uh, and opening up, you know, a lot of <laughs> opening our minds and uh, and show us some ways to elevate pain. Uh, without much ado, I say thank you very much to all our attendees for supporting us and attending this seminar. I hope uh, it is useful to all of you and uh, and uh, it's worth all your time. Thank you very much and we'll see you next week for another web meter. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.